Hi, I'm Ricky B. On behalf of the rest of the launch team, we're happy you've joined us for this service on Sunday, September 27th, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. This past Tuesday, we learned Riverside County residents may resume worshiping in person. We're very excited about reaching this milestone as your launch team has been working in anticipation of this day for several months. Our first in-person gathering at Temple Isaiah will be on Sunday, October 18th at 9.30 a.m. Please refer to the Plan for Regathering document in your newsletters to learn which practices we'll be observing, wearing masks, social distancing, no-touch communion, and the like. On a personal note, I encourage you, if you haven't already, to complete your 2020 census. I go door to door as a census enumerator, helping to make sure everyone is counted. Each year, billions of dollars in federal funding go to schools, hospitals, fire departments, roads, senior centers, and other resources, all based on census data. It's also used to determine the number of seats each state will have in the U.S. House of Representatives. If you've misplaced the census questionnaire you received in the mail, you can complete it online by going to my2020census.gov. It's not too late. Be counted. Thanks for connecting with us at Hope Palm Springs. Welcome to Virtual Worship. All right, ladies, we're going to end our Bible study with some prayer. I'll open and then I'll close, okay? Let's bow our heads, please. Oh, God, Lord, we lift your name up high, knowing that you can conquer all things, Lord God, no matter how big or how small, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, I just ask that for your help. I'm just, um, I'm having a hard time managing my big budget, Lord God. Yes, Lord. I just recently have been dealing with unemployment. <sighs> My friend Carol's laid off and it's just really been bumming me out. Jesus. My best friend Denise just recently got broken up with. I spoke to the guy and he said, she's clingy. I just pray that you help her deal with herself. Lord, I just wanna- Oh, heavenly creator. Lord, I just pray that you help me uh, sell my car on Friday. Lord, it's a gently used Mercedes S-Class. Lord, and that I get a fair but just price, Lord God. Oh, gracious God, I wandered into the pet smart the other day, and the ferret from last month was still there. And God, I know these are your ugliest of your creatures, but I just, I pray God, please, someone adopt. Yes, God, of Abraham and Isaac mm -hmm. and his many, many sons. I've been so distressed thinking about the idea of hurricanes, and God, just keep me far, far away from oh, them. Lord. I just want to... Oh, Papa. I just pray that you help me. I have some leftover euros from my trip to Switzerland, Lord, and I just pray that the exchange rate is favorable. Oh, great physician. I saw a decrepit pigeon with a junk wing, and I just pray you give that pigeon strength. Lord, I just want to... And Lord, we just lift up all of these things, Lord, in your name. Okay, Lord. no. I mean, sorry. Before we end, I would just like to ask for strength as I prepare for chemo. Oh my God, Jamie. Oh my God. Y'all, cancer is so expensive. I, 
I hear it's so expensive. We thought my cat had cancer. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. yes. um, but it was just a big ball of hair matted. How many people know? Are we the first? Do you want people to know? I just heard about your cancer. about anything else at Hamilton tonight. Oh, oh my God. God. I'm sister. thinking about it. Sister. You have been looking sister. forward to this all week. <laughs> oh, no. No. Don't don't tell anyone else to steal your glory. I think we need to do a laying on of hands. Okay? Yes. I think we should do a laying Everybody on of hands. Everybody lay our hands on Stevie right now. Please, thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> thank you for Stevie, Lord. I just thank you for Hamilton and for Lynn Manuel. The Gospel for today is found in Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 through 32, and reads as follows in Jesus' name. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin... We are afraid of the crowd, for they all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This ends the reading of the Gospel. In today's Gospel lesson, Jesus uses a short story to introduce a difficult, although common, dilemma. Two sons are given identical tasks. The one says, no sweat, Pop. Consider it done. But just a little while after that, he gets a call from one of his buddies to go to the mall. Well, off he goes, the task untouched. The second son receives the same assignment, the same job from his father, and, and goes ballistic. Geez, Dad, do you think that's all I was made to do, was to work? I mean, give me a break. You want it done? You go do it yourself. And then he walks away in a huff. Then he begins to feel a little guilty. Well, maybe I was a little too tough on dear old dad. I mean, he is getting up in years and could really use the help. Oh, what the heck, it, it won't kill me. And so off he goes to accomplish the task, not really whistling while he's working, but intent on doing a decent job. Today's parable went something like that. And then Jesus adds a question, a kind of hook that he, he uses to reel his listeners into the story. Which one of these two boys, he asks the chief priests and elders, did the will of his father? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. It was the second son, of course, the chief priests and elders say, who did the will of his father. Jesus then says, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. 
Jesus tells a story as an indictment against those chief priests and elders who stood in opposition to him and his mission. In, in his not so subtle way, Jesus accuses them of being leaders who spoke all the right words, but who were not persons of corresponding actions. In contrast, Jesus points to the unscrupulous tax collectors and prostitutes, those who may have initially said no to God's invitation, but upon encountering Jesus, had a change of heart. And as a result, their lives on the outside began to display the change that had occurred for them on the inside. In other words, Jesus used this parable to illustrate an important point. It's not what's on your lips that counts, but what's in your heart that makes all the difference. And so the question that is forced upon us is, is the one in the story? Are we going to offer God lip service, saying with our words, yes, Father, like the first son, I will do what you asked me to do, and then by our very actions deny or dishonor the relationship that we have with God? Or can we offer God even our no's, like the second son, but then allow the relationship that we have with God to transform us from the inside out. Are we more like the chief priests and the elders in opposition to Jesus who offer their near perfect observance of the law, but their hearts they could not give? Or are we more like the tax collectors and the prostitutes who had no religious pedigree, and yet within the context of a relationship with Jesus, they were somehow changed. Chief priests and elders or tax collectors and prostitutes, in which category do you fall? Now, I know the category you'd like to be in, the category of those who say yes right off the bat to being a worker in the vineyard of God's kingdom. And, and you follow your yes with faithful and corresponding action. But remember, there's only two options in today's story the son who said yes and didn't do the work, and the son who said no and did. Chief priests and elders, or tax collectors and prostitutes. Well, what if we go at it this way? The group that seemed to finally get it, the group that experienced transformation as a result of their relationship with Jesus, the group that Jesus said was going into the kingdom of God ahead of the others was the tax collectors and the prostitutes. Those who said no initially, like the son, but had a change of heart. What if we followed their example? I mean, what if with all our yeses we give to God, what if we offered God our noes as well? What if along with our availability, we offer God our unavailability too? Our sincerity and our insincerity, our willingness to follow God's will, and our stubborn refusal to follow God's will. What if we not only gave to God our acts of kindness, but our disgusting acts of sinfulness? Along with a believing heart, could we speak to God about our unbelief, handing over even our doubts to God? What if we offered God the unholy side of who we are instead of just the holy? What do you suppose God would do with all that? I mean, that's what the second son did in the parable. He said, he said, no, dad, I don't want to. You know, imagine the honesty of a statement like that and the honesty of a statement that would be a prayer like that. Is that a prayer that God could accept? You know, most of our lives, we've heard the message loud and clear that Christianity is all about being good. If I was a good Christian, if I loved God and wanted to please God, if I read my Bible, prayed, went to church, then I would be okay. Wherever the message came from, that message, it was a lie. The entire gospel resounds again and again with the message that God is preposterous enough to accept as beautiful what the world and even ourselves would reject as ugly. God sees beyond the ugliness of our lives to the heart. Maybe God wants to meet you in that place you've decided God can't. That one issue in your life that, that you've somehow separated 
from your faith in the most unlikely and unseemly of places. Hebrews 10 says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. That means telling the truth, being honest with God, trusting that God wants to know what's real in your heart. Jesus was honest and offered even his own reluctance to God's plan. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, Lord, let this cup pass from me. That cup of suffering and death was not a cup from which Jesus wanted to drink. And so in complete honesty and in the security of his relationship with his father, he spoke honestly and openly. And yet in the midst of that encounter, in those honest truth-telling moments, Jesus spent with God, his heart was transformed. And from that moment on, one never gets a sense that Jesus was anything but completely on board with the plan of his heavenly father for him to drink down that cup of suffering and death. And with his whole body, his whole spirit and mind, every fiber of his being, Jesus embraced the cross. His no had become a yes. Don't just offer to God all the good things about yourself. Don't just give to God your willingness and your ableness. Don't just give God all your yeses. Offer to God as well your reluctance, your resistance, your hesitations, your stubborn refusals, your outright rebellion. In honest truth, offer to God your no's, not just your yeses. And then see what God does with it. See if God doesn't honor you for your honesty, for your bold truthfulness, and see if by the power of God's grace and God's beautiful acceptance of you right where you are, exactly as you are, if God's transforming love might not just turn your no into a yes. Amen. <laughs>